Hey everybody, how are you doing tonight? Uh, my name is Patrick and I'm here with uh, Research Hub, which is essentially a Reddit style forum where our goal is to accelerate the pace of scientific research using a blockchain token to incentivize healthy research behaviors. I'm here today with uh, Ian Hilgart Martizis, who I'm sure you guys all read his paper. It's kind of like, I think, an absolutely incredible example of how citizen science can change the world today. And so um, what we'll do during this next hour is essentially have Ian introduce himself. We'll go through the paper figure by figure, and then uh, we'll open things up for an AMA. So we currently have about three questions on the Research Hub discussion, which I'll post in the chat here. But if anybody in the audience uh, at any point, we're gonna try and keep things pretty conversational. So if you have a question, feel free to uh, type it in the chat or post it on the discussion page. And we'll get to that within the last half an hour or so of the event. So yeah, Ian, if you want to introduce yourself, that'd be awesome. Hi, I'm Ian. Uh, did this research project. Um, I have a background in bioscience from Oregon, uh, currently a data analyst. Um, let's see what else. I think it's about all I have. I've done this type of experiment many times before when I worked in bioscience. And when I was in bioscience, I worked at um, basically all levels of research from uh, basic bench research to um, preclinical work in mice to clinical trials itself. Um, and then I started to shift into the uh, data analysis side of things, and then um, moved out of bioci bioscience. But pandemic brought me back. One other thing uh, I think is worth mentioning is CureHub. It seemed really cool to me. Do you mind describing what you do with that? Yeah, uh, well, CureHub is pretty much defunct now as it was. But originally, we intended it to be uh, service to help people find clinical trials uh, for cancer and to um, kind of match them to the clinical trials that would give them the best shot. The goal or the rationale was that having, I was uh, working specifically in cancer immunotherapy. And at the time I had access to all the cutting edge immunotherapy drugs. And I had um, access to a lot of the data. And this, these were drugs that were in clinical trials and not yet available to the public. They hadn't been FDA approved at least. Um, and there's a lot of people out there who have exhausted all their treatment options who have cancer and a clinical trial is their last shot. And, you know, when you're at that point, <coughs> there's an opportunity cost with not going into the right trial. And so you want to get it right. And so I was, my friend and I were trying to create a platform that would help shepherd people into the right trial, given what we knew about the immunotherapy drugs and um, information that might not be available to the public. Um, unfortunately, it didn't really work out because one thing that you kind of realize as you work more in the medical field and you try and do these fringe things is that at the end of the day, people will tend to just do whatever their doctor tells them to do. And so without, you know, a solid backing from medical professionals, uh, the chances are pretty low that people are going to end up taking your um, ideas and running with them. There, along the way, there's a few motivated people that I met that you know did use Cure Hub um, to their advantage. But for the most part, uh, things are so uh, difficult to understand once you start to get into the uh, kind of science of things and the different treatment options that. Uh, the average person just can't weed through it and make that decision on their own. So. Thank you. 
Um, and I've mentioned this to you before, but I, I find you in general very inspirational, um, not only for your study here, but for Cure Hub. I think you know it's something that's really needed, and it it empowers the average person in a way where they can make their own decisions in their own life. And I think that's really, really important. Um, one kind of guiding principle we have at Research Hub is we wanna make science more like open source code where anyone in the world can go on GitHub and look up an open source project and using the resources through the internet, essentially teach themselves how to become a talented developer. I think um, science should be like that. Currently it's not for a variety of reasons. But what you touched on where giving the average person the expertise to become not necessarily like independent of medical advice, but to, to be able to make their own educated decisions, I think is one of the motivating factors that we have for creating this project. So I think kind of building off that to jump into the paper here, I'd like to um, kind of ask you, Ian, like, like, why did you do this? You know, like what what was the motivating factor where you were like, hey, the world needs this data. I you know I want to try my hand at trying to give it to them. Yeah, um, I had been working on a lot of different projects related to the coronavirus, um, and I think I, I'm just kind of naturally curious or along the way that when I hear something's a problem and it's not something that you can see yourself and, you know, initially it's pretty far away. It's kind of like in China and not necessarily right at your doorstep. And so I started to have my, develop my own questions and then think about, you know, what, what resources are out there that would help me um, address those questions. Uh, so I did a couple different projects and then along the way, <clears throat> I have friends talk to me about how like they were super sick and, you know, I'm, pr they're pretty sure they had it. And, uh, everybody pretty much has had a cold or flu since, you know, January or since last, the start of last winter. And so then everybody's kind of questioning if they've had it already. And, you know, you hear, oh, you also hear things about the difficulty in getting tested. And so, the confidence in the absolute numbers wasn't very high for me. And then, you know, you start thinking about like, well, what, how would you better test or better understand the spread of coronavirus? And, you know, I had that background in immunology and um, bioscience. And so I kind of knew what tests to do to answer that question. And, um, then I just happened to see an advertisement for a, uh, you know, COVID-19 spike protein ELISA and thought, um, yeah, I should, I should just buy one. And so my friend and I were talking about it and I just bought one and we're just going to, you know, test ourselves and chip each kind of like split the cost of the kit. And then, you know, you get the kit and you're thinking, okay, well, there's 40 spots I can test. So it'd be a waste for me to just use part of the plate, you know, and the way these assays work, you have to um, use standards each time. So if you just run part of the plate at one time and then part of the plate at the other, at another time, you'd be losing space for samples. And so it's like, well, let's see if we can just get 40 people to be tested. And then uh, like as soon as I start asking people, I start coming out of the woodwork a little bit, wanting to be tested. And um, also I had been really curious about the homeless population. It's um, a real bad problem, especially close to my house. There's probably... Uh, three homeless camps within th a quarter mile, half mile of my house. And, um, you know, these people are not uh, making the best decisions for themselves. So uh, I was kind of curious how they were doing. And um, so I decided to test them. And, you know, 
well, then you kind of decide, well, if I'm doing all this work, testing all these people. I should probably just write the results up and publish it and send it out to the world and share this and make it bigger than, you know, just something that my friends and I anecdotally know to be true or possibly true. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's incredible. Like even taking the initiative to share it um, and like you've gotten, you, you know, I got in touch with you because I saw your tweet and you shared the paper on Research Hub and I saw it and was like, wow, this is, you know, I almost want to do it like in my community. Um, mm-hmm. But before we jump into the paper, like one more question I have is like, uh, can you talk a little bit about the response you've gotten since you've shared it? Like have, have people reached out to you? What have they said? That kind of thing. Yeah. So there's a couple of different responses I get, I've gotten. The dominant one is people wanting to be tested uh, and telling similar stories like I was saying, where they like, I was so sick, you know, back in February or early March or, you know, sometime last winter. And I'm sure I had it and, you know, I want to be tested or, you know, I've actually been contacted by like one, uh, a fire department wanted me to test a hundred firefighters and I've had other uh, kind of first responders reach out to me to wanting to be tested as well. Um, So that's by far the dominant response. Uh, Most people are positive other than that, you know, I say thanks for sharing. Um, The one thing I didn't foresee was it, ended up kind of becoming some uh, propaganda in China. Um, what? Yeah, I had a lot of people sending me screenshots of tweets that were in Chinese that were saying, you know, um, this is proof that the virus started in the U.S. because um, our strongest positive signal came from an individual who said they were sick in December. Um, I had a lot, I was looking at the analytics on my website. There's a lot of traffic through Weibo, which is the Chinese Twitter. Um, I had other messages sent to me on other like platforms. I didn't know like what they are or whatnot, but somebody had posted my, the PDF there. And so that was a pretty significant um, response as well. That was really on unanticipate it <laughs> it almost gets to show though how like it's kind of traveled to every corner of the world it's sort of amazing in a way yeah yeah it is uh there's a lot of different countries you know who knows if they're actual people or not these days that have visited my website but um there 78 con- different countries visited that page wow. last i checked and that's in like a week. And I use that as uh, evidence that the old school method of publishing to peer reviewed journals is antiquated. And you can get your message out immediately. And if it's important and people want to hear it, then within a week, majority, it could be in front of the majority of the world with no filters. And it was free to do that. <laughs> 